oh, earlier with you the best and so far gone because when I was listening to for all my dogs I feel like that album was just a maturation of those two tracks evolutionizing into that and that would be my shortest take of the album it's a maturation the evolution process of those two songs being wrapped up into 20 something plus tracks that's how I feel about the album I do one better and say it's a maturation of all of Drake into one album, in my opinion. You get the sensitive, you get the the rapping, you get the the new guy, you get a, a, a little taste of the, what he used to be. But overall, you just get like, this is who Drake is. Like, you want to know who he is? Let's do the whole album. You get a couple songs that may miss you, but you may catch on later in, in you know life, a couple months, a couple weeks. But overall, I'm like, this is a Drake that I've, I've kind of missed. I've, seen, I've, I've heard a lot, a lot of Drake that I've missed in there. And it's like, you know what? This is good. But at the same time, though, it's like you get that aggressive gangster Drake at the same exact time. So it's just like, okay, I like this. A lot of people don't like it. They feel like he's not growing. But I don't think this is the album for him to show that he's grown. It's just more of a flex than anything but else. To that, Darnell, right? People say, oh, it doesn't sound like he's grown. I I understand that argument as it relates to context of just like, Drake, what have you been having going on with your life and so on and so forth? Okay, we know you're a dad. There's bars here, there sprinkled out through, you know, Adonis, so on and so forth, right? But when you act, when you try to have the conversation about whether or not Drake has grown and what new material or content about your life are you going to talk about? Album for album, Drake has told you who he is, certified level boy. I'm going to be engaged with all these women until the end of time or until I feel like I found the one or the ones and because of that y'all just gonna keep hearing me talk about all these different women and these fantasies that I have with women throughout my lifetime nothing more nothing less and you could argue there's a, that's all there is to Drake's life at this particular particular point in time well worded my brother well well articulated dog that was probably the best description of his old album and this album and the big difference of. It's just like, like I said, what do you expect him to say? Like, you know what he's done. What do you want to know his future plans? He's already giving you his future plans. He want to retire at this age or he want to do this with his life with women. And like, you already know what he's going to say. So at this point, him re reiterating himself is going to do as far as, you know, or what is him trying to dig so much more deeper going to do if you already know this guy? He's like, nine number one out al- number one albums or something like that like tied up with michael jackson at this point like bro he's giving you a lot of work hold on, hold on, free- hold on. With, with, so, with a touch of some free stuff i want to make a differentiation between that. i think somebody um on twitter made a great point um let's let's be cool with the michael jackson comparisons and here's why michael jackson was coming up in an era of no streaming and yes it is very important why because back then, bro, people, bro, come on, man, hard back physical copies, bro. He's literally sending people, all colors, all ages, to whatever store you could go get music from to go physically buy that. There's something to be said about that. Should be having, times ten before you could say you're exactly. reaching. Like it, it, bro. If Michael Jackson had streaming, he literally would have took taken over the world. There would not have been one person in the world that wasn't listening to Michael Jackson. And I firmly believe that. And I mean, like every country, you know how you say in the Bible and Revelations, right? I don't know if it's exactly in Revelation. Forgive me, fellow believers. But it says <laughs> a line in there where it's like, um, Lord Jesus Christ won't come back until um, the gospel has been preached and reached to every corner, every sector of the globe, right? And then and only then will we return, right? So I feel like I equate it to the same, not calling him second coming of Christ on the other like that. I'm not making no analogy or metaphor crazy like that. But what I am saying is the reach as far as like just overall impact. Like I feel like it's a differentiation between people going out, hustling to go, but not even hustling, just going out and physically going to get it as opposed to, you know what I'm saying? We And, and it ain't Drake's fault, right? The, year he was born right the area he was born into but 
I know it's like, yeah, he got the most number ones like Mike, but in an era where nobody was doing what Mike was doing, and it was, and it still stands the test of time as far as like sales. Like, and if you go hard back, like the most number one albums, the most purchased album, um, the most the album that went diamond the most times in the history of music, like you're talking about unprecedented rarefied air. But still though, shout out to Drake, because I know the old heads um to kind of go back to the for all the dogs fake. Um forgive me if I'm all over the place, but I know the Joe Buttons of the world would have you, I wanna no, I wanna hear him rap. I wanna hear him hang around his peers. I wanna hear him talk about, you know, things people his age should be talking about. But it's like damn what should people his age be talking about? It's like he's giving you the authenticity of his of his life and women twenty four seven up until this point and and the relevancy he still holds. He surrounds himself with younger people because he still wants to appeal to a certain demographic to the people that's buying the music, right? To the streamers, to the people who have attention spans less than five seconds. Our fellow millennials love them, um, right? So it's like. I mean, you one can't be mad at a recipe for success, but it's like, dang, I get where the hip hop purists come in and be like, oh, well, I want to hear this and I want to listen to it. It's like, well, damn, you know, go listen to an earlier album. He got some that, that, you know what I'm saying? It's like, I don't, I don't know if you'll get that version anymore of Drake, right? Um, but that's the beauty of it. I feel like you can do whatever you want now. And I think he's at that level and I think that's what they're waiting on. It's like, hey, you at that level to where you should be able to just do whatever you want and still just be accepted. And I feel like this is Drake doing whatever he wants, right? He still want to be number one. He's very much so a competitor. He wants to compete. He wants the numbers to actualize it and mirror the success that he's having. Not, a, not somebody just saying, man, I don't care what the numbers say. That album was good. Because you got a lot of rappers like that, right? It's like, mm-hmm. man, I don't care what the numbers say. Man, that album was great. That album was woo woo. But it's like, man. You want to be good and go, you want to be Drew good. And it's like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Any closing remarks on the Drake? Alex? Oh, did you say something? Else? I feel like you just been listening. I could be wrong. No, I, I, I say shit. I was, I was waiting for everybody to be finished, bro. Oh, okay. Okay. All I, I got to say is what I've been saying. <laughs> okay. No, nah, rock out, rock out. Bro, it's, it's the best Drake album ever made, bro. Put put any other album up against it. I think and, that's and you you and I love that you make I love that you, you like that expression come over you because you even just said it, bro. You're not gonna get that Drake anymore. Right? You're gonna get the Drake that he is now that we know him to have a, his own 757 Drake. Like, bro. The nigga killed everybody with one line. Will they give me my flowers? Well, of course not. They don't want to talk about that because it's a sore spot. Bro, so we we, we ain't really worried about who likes the album or not, bro. One, your your your, your woman's going to continue to like it. That's what for sure. Know? Right? Uh... And... and, and I gave you the prelude with Certified Lover Boy. Y'all was like, oh, you do lovey Dovey. But then I come for all the dogs and really get on some dog hey, hey, hey. was... No, no, I'm not talking about you, bro. It's just all the, all the chat I've been here, bro. And it's like, y'all crazy, right? But it's like, to me, it's like Kobe and LeBron, I'm sorry, I love them both. They can never be better than Jordan. They can never be better than Jordan. Drake can be as good or even better, he's never going to be Mike. He ain't well, nobody going to be Mike. I mean, Mike... Hold on, Mike. so so who, so who is your Mike in rap? Like, who is Drake never going to be better than? Michael Jackson. Okay. But Michael Jackson ain't a rapper. Michael Jackson transcends all music categories. He is, like, just music. Yeah. He he appeals to everyone, though. That's, that's Yeah, he appeals kind of to literally everyone and everybody and everything. And, and Drake I mean, only the does only rap thing Michael Jackson didn't do was get into and Drake only I, I, does I, I get where you're going. I get where you're going. And Drake it, only it, does it, rap and he's in the conversation. But he also does international rap as well. And he's he not also afraid does a lot to of like other. 
go he out puts on his Canadian accent when he to... wants to feel all uh, heroic. So I don't know now. now I don't know if we're comparing drinking. apples to oranges, oranges to apples, apples to apples. Right? No, that's a good thing. It's what you're supposed to do. Like, that's what Michael Jackson was doing. He didn't make just nothing but love music. He made music. And that's what Drake is trying to and do to make a comparison. It did come to make a rap album to put him that much closer to Michael Jackson. Let me tell you this. Michael Jackson. And then does all that didn't come to make a rap album. I think he's, a, he's <laughs> the next <laughs> best thing to Michael Jackson. Yeah, you got I think Drake's he album. He can't be that a... because Beyonce got that. He can be the third best thing to Michael Jackson. Mm, what did y'all say? I pre- thank you, Sean Hart, for that uh backup. Cause I was like, I, what did you I say, Sebastian? <laughs> say that again. He can't be the second coming. Beyonce is the second coming to Michael Jackson. He can be the third coming to Michael Jackson. Go look it up, bro. Go look up this Renaissance concert all over the globe. Go look it up. Don't ask me. Drake, Drake can one can America. argue that, that she just have a run at this point, and that's just that's just clientele. If it makes any sense, Drake is still building his his fan base to a certain extent. He's he ain't went down yet, dog. Like he's still going up. Beyonce ain't went, went he down. Ain't, but he, he ain't gonna ever coaster. touch Beyonce, brother. He ain't gonna never touch Beyonce, brother. Niggas do not pay for music. That's pay for music. Too. They're gonna keep her being the queen bee. I'm sorry. Rap music is down forty percent. Drake music is not down forty percent. Okay, rap music is. You think I Beyonce? Music but you just made the point, though. Talking about you some rap music point. down forty percent. Prime, prime point. Rap music's down, but not Drake. So that says like I... that's what we trying to say, bro. Drake ain't rap music. Drake is Drake. 